Hi guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the YouTube channel that talks all things Wentworth. If you're new to the channel, then hit that subscribe button right now and share the love. And if you stick around until the end of the video, I will be responding to some of your comments from a previous video. So when Wentworth began all those years ago, the main focus was around B. Smith. B lasted for four seasons and pretty much did everything. She was involved in some of the most biggest storylines of the show and is sorely missed by all Wentworth fans. Her time might have been cut short but her memory will always live on. So grab yourself a cuppa and let's take a trip down memory lane with the top 10 B Smith moments. Smashing its way into number 10, B kills Jack's halt. Okay, so it was the moment that we were all waiting for, for B to finally snap and become badass. All the way through season 1, she had been pushed around by Jack's halt, but the final straw was when Jax had ordered for her son Brayden to murder B's daughter Debbie on the outside. So B found out about this and confronted Jax right at the end of season 1. B wanted to hear Jax say it herself, which Jax ends up doing. Uh, but she also ends up goading B by saying things like your daughter is better off dead, which literally sends B into a total frenzy and B ends up grabbing a biro pen and stabbing Jax through the neck. B then comes back to reality for a moment and realises what she's done and she actually tries to save Jax and B ends up pulling the pen out of the neck and tries to stop the bleeding but Jax literally just pushes B away and all the blood starts squirting out of her neck and landing on top of B so B ends up leaving the cell, walks down the corridor and presses the panic button realising that she is now in Wentworth for the foreseeable future. Coming in at number 9, we have B attacks Brayden. So, B might have got rid of Jax, but now she wanted to avenge Debbie's death by killing Brayden. So, B ends up setting a trap when she writes a letter for Brayden, basically saying how sorry she is for taking away his mum. And B gives it to Simone Slater, who ends up giving it to him. And Simone literally says to B that, no worries, Brayden is coming to visit me tomorrow. So, plan all set. B then sets up a visit with a lawyer in the visiting room, armed with a shiv, and she waits for Brayden to arrive. It's a tense moment, but Brayden finally arrives and B pounces. She runs and lunges at him and aims the shiv at his throat. She then misses, but ends up cutting the side of his face, and then B ends up wrestling on top of him and trying to give him a fatal stab, but Mr. Jackson manages to get her off him and he ends up restraining her. It's absolute chaos in the visiting room, and just as B is taken away, Brayden gives out a cocky smile. Coming in at number 8, we have B versus Cat. So, Brayden wasn't going to let B get away with attacking him and scarring his face. So, he sends someone in to Wentworth as an inmate to finish off B once and for all. So, basically, three new inmates arrive in Season 2, Episode 4, and it's a bit of a guessing game of who the killer is. But in a later scene in the shower, it is revealed that the assassinator is Cat, who attacks B in the shower block. It's a huge, brutal fight, and uh, Cat literally slices B a couple of times with a knife. B is armed with a zip gun, which she got off Frankie, but Cat actually kicks it out of B's hands, and they both end up on the shower block floor wrestling around. B tries to stop Cat from fatally stabbing her, and just when it looks like that Cat is about to do it, Maxine arrives and grabs Cat off B and punches her straight in the face. I think we were all literally really relieved when Maxine arrived and saved the day, and this was also the start of a beautiful friendship between B and Maxine. Scene. Coming in at number 7, we have B punishes Boomer. So, um, this is the moment when we all realise that B really does mean business. Boomer had bashed Liz after B had told her to leave her alone. So, later on in the laundry, B and her crew, they grab Boomer and drag her to the steam press. Frankie watches on in horror but realises that she is outnumbered and that there is nothing more that she can do as B is now the 
top dog. B tells Boomer that uh, she went against her and ignored her orders and then she ends up pulling down the steam press onto both of Boomer's hands. Boomer then starts to scream in a really horrific way and it sounds very painful. It feels like the steam press is on Boomer's hands forever and then B finally lifts it up and Boomer's hands, they're all bubbly and burnt to a crisp, it's quite sickening. And uh, it was a hard lesson for Boomer to learn because uh, I suppose Boomer had been used to doing whatever she wanted after being a part of Frankie's crew in season 2 so B had to put her in her place and even though it was a tough and painful lesson for Boomer to learn I think she eventually understood why B did it and Boomer became a good friend of B's and ended up joining her crew. In at number 6 we have B kills Brayden finally. So even though B had failed to kill Brayden in the visitor's room she wasn't going to give up avenging her daughter's death. And that's pretty much what season 2 was all about, B avenging Debbie and rising to the top but basically she ends up escaping and then she goes on the hunt for Brayden armed with a gun and finds him at his family's business so Brayden is there with another girl and is about to inject her with heroin but B stops it from happening tells the girl to basically piss off and then B then points the gun at Brayden and she orders him to tell her why he killed her daughter Brayden basically says that he didn't have a choice but B tells him yes you did have a choice you always have a choice and B then instructs Brayden to get the heroin and stick it into his own arm but he ends up bottling it and he tells B that she'll just have to shoot him so B gets ready to shoot but in walks Mr Jackson who tries to talk B down by telling her that it isn't worth it B then starts to listen and she puts the gun down. Brayden then starts to get up quite slowly to walk away but he ends up looking at B with a cocky little smile again. B sees Red, lifts up the gun and shoots him straight through the head, killing him instantly. Yes B, that is how it's done. Coming in at number 5 we have B and Ali's first kiss. So all the way through season 4 B was starting to grow closer and closer towards newcomer Ali. Now up until this point there were no signs that B was interested in women or even any men at this stage because B had such a bad and toxic relationship with her ex-husband Harry. I think we were all just under the impression that she didn't want to be with anyone but Ali changes all of that in season 4 episode 7. B and Ali were were meeting up in private and in a beautiful scene B tells Ali that she cares about her but everyone she cares about ends up dead and doesn't want that for Ali. B then goes to walk off but Ali grabs B's hand and pulls B in closer and the both of them end up kissing for the first time. It's such a beautiful scene and fans across the world were thrilled. I especially like the moment when as soon as they finish kissing, the look in B's face is like something went click in her brain. This makes sense. Coming in at number 4, you don't run this prison, I do. <laughs> It's the moment in the show that changes everything. Ferguson had been ruling the roost for too long and she was used to getting her own way and being in control. But B changed all that at the start of season 3 when she ordered Maxine and the women to start a protest by basically burning everything in the yard and breaking B out of the slot. When Ferguson comes into the yard she goes head to head with B for a chat and B tells Ferguson that she is no longer in control and that Ferguson doesn't run this prison but B does. It's a brilliant moment and fans were just like wow, battle lines are drawn and a war is about to break out. B had come a long way from being a timid little hairdresser to being a leader of a prison going to war with a nasty governor. It's such a satisfying episode and it will always be one of my all time favourite episodes within the whole show. Coming in at number 3 we have B fights Frankie. Now this was another moment that, we're, that we were all waiting for in season 2. Frankie was getting way too big for her boots and I mean I always call season 2 the Frankie is a bitch season even though I absolutely love Frankie. Now Frankie thought that being a good top dog was someone who was the queen of the drug supply and also punishing anyone who messed up her drugs plans which is not true. Things were starting to get out of hand and things 
things came to a head in the laundry. The fight was on and B had some box cutters ready while Frankie was armed with a shiv and the blade fight gets going. It's a brutal scene that goes on for quite some time. There are moments where Frankie gets the upper hand and then there's moments where B gets the upper hand. There is a great moment actually where B tackles Frankie into the washing machine which by the way it wasn't meant to break but the director loved it so much he kept it in. So B and Frankie end up on the floor and B gets the upper hand, B gets the blade and puts it to Frankie's throat telling her to tell the women who's won. Frankie then shouts out that B has won and B then stands up over Frankie and the women look up at the new top dog. Coming in at number two, before B was ready to take over the mantle of Top Dog with Frankie, she wanted to escape. So, B had something to do first after the fight with Frankie, and that was to get out of prison and kill Brayden. So, B ended up cutting her wrists in order to get to an outside hospital. And when she is there, she asks Mr. Jackson for a drink, and while he is away, she disappears from her bedside. Ferguson realises what's going on and alerts Mr. Jackson but it's too late, B has gone. B steals some men's clothing as a disguise, heads down the lift and slowly walks through the hospital reception. Eventually she gets out through the front door, pauses, looks around and then carries on walking into the night. I can remember fans going crazy after this episode had aired and apparently this is the episode that broke the internet. And coming in at our top spot number one, we have B's death. And it really pains me to talk about this yet again, but this is why it's number one, because of how moving and tragic the scene is. This is kind of like the Red Wedding episode of Wentworth. I don't know if we have any Game of Thrones fans in the house, but yes. B wanted to kill Ferguson after Ferguson had hotshotted Ali. And B was told that there was nothing more that, they could, that could be done for Ali. So in the final moment of season four, B manages to get Ferguson alone, armed with his screwdriver, and B tells Ferguson that she's going to kill her. Ferguson is about to die and starts taunting her. She eventually then lunges at her, but then Ferguson ends up getting the upper hand and gets this screwdriver off B. B then sees her chance to destroy Ferguson once and for all, and B ends up running at the screwdriver and actually stabs herself with it, not once, but over and over again, while it's still in Ferguson's hands, making it look like that Ferguson has stabbed her. But Ferguson actually starts to lose it herself, and Ferguson continues to stab B over and over and over again, and B then delivers one of her final lines, I win. Ferguson then realises what she's done, she's fallen for B's trap. B then falls to the floor and looks up at the sky and sees the seahorses. At the same time, Ali is flatli flatlining at the hospital and it looks like that they're going to die together. B slowly slips away and passes away at the prison, but then Ali ends up opening her eyes and waking up right at the very end in the hospital, which is a total tragedy and sad ending. So B Smith will always be one of the best characters in the whole show of the whole time. And uh, I tell you what guys, she really is missed by fans all over the world. And that was the top 10 B Smith moment. So what did you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments box below. And also I have a question. If there is a way that we could bring B back, how could we do it? For me, I would like to see B come back as a ghost or a vision to Ali to basically give us some comfort in the final chapter next year. But let me know some of your ideas, guys. And on that note, it is now time for some comment replies. So we have Shelly2020. I'd love Maxine to come back and Rita and the Freak having a showdown. The show has to go out with a bang. And seeing Frankie and Bridget help Vera and I hope Jake steps up and Anne gets the boot and I can see Mari doing something to Luke Kelly. Yes, Shelly, I agree with all those points. And um, I don't know what Mari's plan is, mind, but yes, maybe she will be the one to take down Luke Kelly. Thank you for your comment, Shelly. 
and we have Mary V. Snow. I agree with most, yes, to Rita as top dog, and Frankie definitely needs to make a cameo. It would make my world if B came to Ali in a dream. B was always my favourite character, and I would be overjoyed to see her again. Rita for the win. I figured they would have reported Maxine's passing in there by now. If Vera ends up an inmate, I think she would be very protective for trying to take down the freak. Yes, Mary. Well, I think Vera, she built up such a brilliant relationship after the Siege episode, and she brought baby Grace in to see some of them. So she would be very well looked after. I mean, we can't really forget that she, you know, she is an officer. Um, so it's, it's, it's not like she wouldn't have any enemies, but I think she would be very well protected, especially if Rita's in there, because they've got a brilliant bond. So thank you for your comment, Mary. And we have Kali Kokit 101 I hope I pronounced that correctly. I think Vera will kill Joan, but I don't think we'll end up in Teal. Instead, Jake will redeem himself and take the blame. Interesting twist. That could be a good twist. Although, I do have a feeling that uh, Jake may go over to the dark side next year when, uh, when he realises that Ferguson remembers everything. But uh, yeah, it would be nice, so uh, thank you for your comment. Laura the Explorer, I would love a Maxine update. Me too, Laura. I just want a letter or something, and I do want her to come and visit Boomer just once. I mean, it would be lovely for Maxine to come in and visit and for her to talk about how much she misses B and things. Just a, just a reminiscence, just for two minutes. Just one scene, that's all we need. So, uh, yes, thank you for your comments, and thank you all for your comments. Keep them coming because I love reading all of them. Okay, so that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you all again very soon.